Hi, I'm gonna show you how to generate random dungeons for your game. In the description you can find my code on GitHub as well as the playlist with the whole tutorial series. With this tool you only need to replace the square prefab with anything you use in your dungeon. At the end I will show you how to use this code to generate hex map. Although it's not a complex generator, there's still some code to write. Mostly array and lists operations. I will start from scratch and show you the whole process of creating that tool, so it will be easier for you to see how all of that is connected. As I've said, we're gonna start from scratch, so here's my scene, there's only main camera with the background set to the black color, and there is my projects tab. I'm gonna switch to one column layout, and now holding the alt key I'm gonna show you all of the files I use for now. There is my prefab, we're gonna talk about it in a second. My scene, two empty scripts, and the first sprite I need. It's just a one by one pixel sprite, and its pixels per unit value is set to 80. Alright, now I'm gonna switch back to two column layout, go to prefabs folder, and we're gonna talk about this prefab. This bad boy is our room. Here we have a empty room script attached, a default box collider 2D with is trigger set to true and the size set to 0.5 by 0.5. We also have a rigid body 2D with body type set to kinematic. We're gonna use those two components to check if our newly generated rooms aren't overlapping. Okay, inside this game object we have a body game object which is just a sprite renderer with the color set to pink and it is scaled up to 60 by 60. Next is our center decoration which is just this white dot. Next we have four additional sprites which are our doors. They look like this. We're gonna turn them off and on depending on if a given connection is closed or not. Before we start coding we need to create a prefab for our room generator. And to do this we're gonna rename this room and add room generator as a new component. But remember we are still working on room prefab. So now we can drag and drop it to the prefabs folder and create a prefab variant. Now we have two prefabs over there, but this one has room one by one as a base. So now if we change the color of this body element to let's say something yellowish and go to the root game object we can apply the changes to this variant and our and our room is still pink but if we go to this prefab you can change for example the center decoration component to something black and now both of them have changed but it doesn't mean that if we change this color to let's say green green we also change this room generator prefab because its body color is already changed so it is not tracking the changes of the body color of its base anymore so now we can safely work with our room generator and don't mess up our room one by one. Let's revert this color change. Okay, and we are ready to go. We are sure that the room generator needs a room component. 
So let's make it require this component. And the same goes to the room. We want it to require box layer 2D and the rigid body 2D. Now in Unity we can create an empty game object and add a room generator over there. And look, we have our components attached. And just make sure that we don't mess it up in the future. For example, if we want to use only those two scripts without anything in this project. We will be able to create rooms in four directions. So let's create a public enum directions with up, right, down and left. And this is the same as creating an array with four integers, starting from zero and ending with three. Now we are ready to define our doors. We need to know if they are active or not. We need to know the direction. We also need to grab their sprite renderer, so this red rectangle. And also we need to know the room to which this door leads. There is a system.serializable decoration which makes it visible in the inspector. And there is a decoration which makes this boolean hidden in the inspector. But this is only a declaration of this struct. So to make it visible in Unity we need to create an array of doors, which is a struct over there, and make it a size of 4. Now in Unity we have this room doors array. Its size is 4, and now while holding the Alt key we can open it up, and we see that every door has its direction, its sprite render, and the room that it leads to. Now Let's set those sprites. So for up we use up. Now we want right. And so on. Please make sure that your directions are in the exact same order as it is right here. So make sure that your enum is like that. And the elements over there are in this order. That way you save yourself some troubles in the future. Now please note that we are still working at the room generator and we want the changes to be also in the room. So let's right click on this room doors and now we can apply this change to either room or room generator. We choose room one by one. Alright, the next thing we need in this room script will be our body and center decoration. We only need sprite renderer of it. Let's go to Unity and select our body and our center decoration. Now apply those changes to the room, not the room generator. And we are ready to start working on the room generator. First, let's talk about the variables that we need in our generator. Here we have amount to generate, which is the number of rooms we want to create. And it's a private integer, so the room can't see it. But we want to see it in our Unity, so we add serialize field. Next, we have our prefab, then we create an array of offsets which will be needed to spawn rooms. Next we create an array of vector2 variables and we call it offsets and it will be used to spawn our rooms on the up, right, down and left directions. Lastly we have a public list of rooms we create. To make it even better we can add a room container, which is just a transform object, a boolean that shows us if we are currently generating rooms or not, 
because we are going to animate this whole process so it will take a while it won't be one frame and the room type variable which points at our generator room so it's not only a generator but also a starting room for the player all right now we initialize those two values in the wake and we are ready to start writing our first version of generator to get the idea how the simplest generation works we're gonna just start generating rooms with this prefab and it will be singular path singular direction generation here we set our direction to right so we always generate our rooms to the right you get our offset which is from this offsets array and we use direction as a index of this array so here we have dir let's go to this and it's number one so let's see it's this one next we grab the position of the last element so for the first iteration of this loop we want it to be transformed with position which is the position of the generator itself next we instantiate as many rooms as we want because we have this for loop inside first we need to get the position of the new room so we get the last position and add the offset now we can save it to the last variable now we instantiate it and to give this whole process an animated look we also wait 0.2 seconds and to make it work we need our function to be iEnumerator and to make this function work we need to use start coroutine and this yield return now just make sure that this function has at least one yield return in case this loop doesn't happen okay let's have a look on it in unity don't forget to use this prefab as our prefab in the generator now we just hit play and as you can see we are generating our rooms first of all we are creating a mess over here it's time to use our rooms container in a week, let's create a new game object with the name rooms grab its transform and save it as rooms container and in this generate rooms let's go to instantiate function and add this rooms container as another argument okay let's go to the scene view and as you can see we have 12 rooms over there so we start from this point this is our vector 2 last we add the offset we spawn a room over there and now this is our vector 2 last variable so we add the offset again we are here we spawn the room and so on all right now we're gonna add unit tests it is used to check if your complex code gives expected results it gives no value to the generator itself but lets you know if you can move on with the development or have to stop and fix bugs in test driven development first we write a test for a new feature make it pass go from red to green if at any point we see some red tests we have to fix bugs before doing anything else i'll do my best to teach you basics of this see you soon Thank <music> you.